Welcome to Franchise Marketing Radio, brought to you by SEO Samba, comprehensive high-performing marketing solutions for mature and emerging franchise brands. To supercharge your franchise marketing, go to seosamba.com. That's S-E-O-S-A-M-B-A dot com. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Franchise Marketing Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. Today on the show, we have Morvan Graves, and she is with 10 Point Capital. Welcome. Thanks very much for having me, Lee. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us a little bit about 10 Point Capital. How are you serving folks? Absolutely. So at 10 Point Capital, we focus on investing in franchisors. Um, we're looking for brands with the potential to become dominant nationally. So oftentimes we're investing with brands uh, that are founder-led, They've proven themselves in their their home state. They've probably gone to a few adjacent states. And now, really, it's just a question of scaling. So that's the kind of businesses that we work with. Um, As a team, we like to think of ourselves as fairly holistic in our understanding of the franchise world. So we've invested in over 40 franchise transactions. We've been franchisees for seven concepts. And we've even worked for four franchisors. So we really feel like we have an understanding of what it takes to both be a successful franchisor, what franchisees need, and then ultimately what it takes to make a a franchisor a good investment for a private equity group such as ourselves. Now, do you work primarily with uh, franchises that are B2C, B2B, a mixture? We are mostly B2C, not for any particular preference. Um, and in a sense, it depends how you define that. So we currently have two restaurant chains in our portfolio and uh, Slim Chickens, which is a better chicken QSR concept. There are about 135 locations. Um, we have Walk On Sports Bistro. That's another restaurant chain. They just opened their 60th location. Um, and then we have Phoenix Salon Suites, which is essentially we work for beauty professionals. So if you're a franchisee, you're really a landlord and you're renting space to beauty professionals. So uh, to be to be clear on whether it's B2C, B2B, it, it really is a slightly complicated question in this regard. And then, so you're just, are you looking at um, franchisors of a certain size before you get involved? Like, do they have to have some sort of escape velocity or are you kind of launching brand new brands? Typically not launching brand new brands. Uh, probably the sweet spot for us is a brand that's cash flow positive or on the verge of it, where they've got a significant number of locations, enough that you know the concept works. It might still need some tweaks, but you can see that it's not just the the, the local Arkansas concept. It's, you know, in the case of, of a brand like Slim Chickens, that it really does have national national appeal. So we're we're coming in at that point where they've proven the brand but it's about scaling. So what are some kind of elements you're looking for when you see a brand that you go, hey, this is going to be a good fit for 10 point capital? Absolutely. So for us, we believe it starts with strong unit economics. It's quite possible to sell franchises, but they have to work. And that's the only thing that is going to make a franchise or endure. And so we really need to to understand the franchise economics. We spent a ton of time up front uh, as we look at investments, understanding the units that work, the units that don't work, why they don't work, um, and what really the model is. And so that is that is the first thing for us. Um, the second piece is really understanding how they, they think about their relationships with franchisees. Growing a franchisor is a partnership, and so you want franchisees who are supportive of your brand, who will talk well about your brands to future franchisees. And and so we really want to see franchisors who understand that key to success here is putting in place the support that your franchisees need to, to grow and, sur- and survive. So that's, that's a huge piece for us. Now, reg- regarding unit economics, are there certain metrics you're looking for that got to hit a certain percentage of sales or recurring or year over year? Like what are the kind of the metrics that matter to you? We, we look a lot at the investment costs. So what's the out-of-pocket cost for the franchisee? And then we're looking at 
the the returns they can get. So how how long does it take them to get their money back? Um, a, a great investment for us is one with a three to one investment ratio. Um, that's that's kind of where we we look. But I mean that's that's a fantastic investment that probably puts you in the top five to ten percent of of franchise brands. So that's a that's a pretty high bar. Now, as part of um, you know, when you're working with brands, is is part of your relationship obviously is investing money capital things like that but you know from a a person who has um, talked to a lot of vcs and and investment there's smart money and and dumb money like money just for the sake of money is okay but i money with connections and skills and and tools that help me grow or better is that more along the lines of what 10 point capital offers that's definitely our approach. We we probably do one deal every 12 to 18 months. And that's very deliberate. We want to have the time to partner with the brands that we invest in and to really help them grow. It would be rare that we're not talking to our, our franchise or brand partners daily, might even be multiple times a day. Um, we like to think our, of ourselves as alongside them, helping them to scale and grow, helping them figure out who they need to add to the team, what areas of the uh, the organization perhaps need some some additional investments or some additional uh, partners to to help them you know, to find the right vendor or or the the right third party to help in that area. So we we spend an awful lot of time working with our with our companies, and I think that's where our background really helps because we have been there. I mean, I've. I've been there trying to get permits from the city. I, I, I understand that pain and I understand that only so much of that is under your control. But I also understand that once you have those in hand, you can be very systematic about how long it takes to then open your unit. So, and, and you know, set yourself uh, milestones along the way. And so that, that really is where we can get into the details in a way that perhaps someone who's not as familiar with the franchise space uh, might struggle. Now, um, if you don't mind, do you mind sharing some advice for these emerging brands that are out there uh, that maybe they're not ready for you, but maybe they will be if they implement some of this advice? Um, what are some of the um, kind of, I mean, I mean, this is the beauty of your organization and your team is you, you've you seen a lot of uh, case studies in real life and not hyp- hypotheticals. You, you've you got scar tissue and you have have successes and failures, so you have a lot of key learnings that you can share. So do you mind sharing some of this with emerging brands, just general yes, absolutely. brand growth uh, conversation a little bit? So Yeah, what... and oftentimes we, we start talking to the brands we invest in several years before we actually invest. We, we love that. We love forming the relationships early on and watching the brand grow. Uh, walk-ons is a great example of that. We probably started talking to the team there two years before we invested. Uh, at the time, they might have been 15 units, as I said, they've just opened their 60th. So we like to follow them along that journey. Um, what what we like to understand is, how does the leadership team think about the brand and, and growing it? And that's along a few dimensions. So what what is the brand's differentiation from com- competition? What's the culture they're trying to, to build? Um, that's ultimately going to be what differentiates you. And we we want to understand how you're distinctive. Um, I think the other piece that's good to see is when brands are investing with the understanding of what it takes to be a great franchisor. So they might be putting in place some senior people before before they have enough franchisees that that's truly justified. They might be putting in place really good operations and annuals, very clear brand standards. They're just thinking of where they will be 18 months down the line from where they are at that point in time. And that, that because that's what differentiates great franchisors from, from many others, that they've really thought about, I am now going to be supporting my franchisees and growth so I can sell franchises. But once those guys open, I need them to be tr- truly successful. So I think just really understanding what it's going to take to be successful over time is is a critical part for a, a smaller smaller franchisor. 
Yeah, I think that transition can be difficult for some folks going from the mentality of, you know, I got to make one more chicken sandwich. How do I do that as and turn into this kind of sales and training company? It's a different or different business, really. Completely. It, and that that's why a lot of brands aren't suited to franchising. It's a very different skill set and mindset to support others in running your brand. Um, and also to attract franchisees so to, to to sell versus owning and operating units. It's a totally different skill set. Obviously, there's there's things to learn from both, but you need to be prepared to, to step back and be in that support and guidance role as a franchisor. Now, is your role sometimes to install kind of a new CEO of the organization in terms of, okay, they're in charge of really the franchise you know, somebody founded it and got it off the ground, but now you need more of a CEO manager type person to run the this new enterprise. It really depends on the, on the concept. So uh, I'll take a few for example. So Tropical Smoothie Cafe was one of our investments. We exited that last fall to Levine Life and Capital Partners. Um, we're, we're, in fact, the, the founder of Tropical Smoothie Cafe is, a, is an operating partner with 10 Point Capital. However, after our investment, he was ready to take a, a role on the board rather than uh, running the company. And so they added a, a CEO and, and Charles Watson is the, is the current C, CEO there. Um, at Slim Chickens, another one of our investments, one of the founders, Tom Garden, is still the CEO. And um, at at Walk-Ons, um, Brandon Landry is the CEO, but we have a president that he brought in before we invested who takes on a lot of the day-to-day -day operational pieces as well. Um, and then Phoenix Salon Suites uh, is is a little bit of a mix on that front. The founders, um, Gina and Jason, are still very involved, um, but we also have Brian Kelly there as our, our CEO. So the... It really depends on what the founder wants to do. Um, we, we don't have any preconceived notions on, on what that would would typically amount to. And I think that's that's just typical of how we approach investments. It's it's a partnership. And so we spend a lot of time talking before investing with the with the founders about what they want and what they want over time. Well, that's great because it is a partnership, and and that's important for the the founder and the org and the organization to decide. Okay, what what outcome do I desire? And then, in certain cases, um, you know, that way you're both getting what you want out of this, and it's eyes wide open. Exactly. Now, um, any advice for that emerging franchise or to help them attract the right franchisee? Because there just seems to be so many tactics when it comes to growing your franchise brand and getting leads in there. And just it, it, you want to get the right folks, especially at the beginning, I would imagine that's like critical because they're the ones that are going to be telling the story to the next folks. Absolutely. And figuring out through who the right franchisee is for your concepts can be a journey for, for new franchisors. So there's some, some basics that I would say most people understand the, the financial qualifications relative to the investments. Um, there's probably also just the mindset or the cultural fits. There, there's only this kind of open question of what experience does the franchisee need to have? So uh, take Phoenix Salon Suites, for example. <laughs> Should the owners be hairstylists who want to, to own a, a bigger business? Um, we've, we find over time that that's probably not the best profile of franchisee for, for that brand that is typically a, a business professional. Uh, they may even have another another job. Um, and so there's it's defining that really, really matters um, as you think about how to grow. So now what does kind of that um, whiteboarding meeting look like when you're discussing this with your clients? How are you determining, okay, this works, this is obvious, maybe they're not maybe this person is the right fit and it isn't obvious. Um, how do you kind of like, do you have any exercises that you work through to identify that ideal franchisee? Typically we look at, 
historical units. Um, so that's part of why I say we, when we invest, they tend to be brands that are proven in a few different markets. And then we sit down with the management team and go unit by unit, and we understand the quality of the location, the, the, you know, whether the market is a good fit for that brand. We, and when I say location, it, it's the market, but it's also things like ingress and egress. Um, it, it can be very specific. Um, we're also looking at who are the franchisee partners, who, what, was their, what was their history beforehand, um, in, in the case of, of Slim Chickens, for example, we find that QSR, uh, franchisees who've got QSR concepts uh, for other brands make really good franchisees for Slim Chickens. Um, but initially we had some casual dining franchisees and they weren't necessarily as good a fit. And so we've we've changed who we're looking for in that profile over time. And that's just part of, I mean, that's just good business, right? Yeah, that's just as you evolve, you become clearer on right. who's the right fit and who's the wrong fit. And then you can, you know, react accordingly. Absolutely. It's course correcting as you go. Now, for you, what's the most rewarding part of the job? I haven't been in franchising for so long. And then being on this side of the table, um, the wins may feel different. I think it's... it's at some level, for for me, it's always the relationships. So I, I love seeing brands grow. I love seeing the teams grow, the people on the teams uh, advance in their positions and their responsibilities. And that's that's the super thing about working with fast-growing brands the, the way that we do. Um, you, you really see them transforming people's lives. It can be a, a restaurant server who becomes a training manager who ultimately... Uh, takes on the responsibility for a, a section of the operations team. Uh, so it's, it's really exciting to see that. And that's uh, very rewarding for me. Now, um, as part of the council, you're offering uh, your clients or your partners um, help when it comes to employees, because this seems to be a really challenging time for a lot of folks when it comes to attracting the right folks or maybe moving to some automation um, where they hadn't had it before. Is this part of kind of the the things you bring to the table? We're probably less involved in that. I mean, we certainly have all the conversations about uh, labor and, and hiring. Um, that said, our, our franchise or partners are running the business day to day and they've all built really strong cultures within their company. And I think are doing a great job of translating that down to their franchisees. So truthfully, they're, they're better at doing that than we will ever be. So you're, um, you're giving them resources and advice as they need it, but ultimately uh, you're partnering with brands that probably are already doing a pretty good job in this area. Absolutely. So uh, what do you need more of? How can we help you? We just love hearing from people who are building great concepts and looking to grow. That's, um, as I said, we're happy to, to talk a long time before you're even considering taking on a, a financial partner. We love to see the brands grow and we love to build those relationships and to start learning how you think um, and for us to start that, that kind of dating relationship in a sense. Um, but that's that's really where we... Uh, we love to partner. Good stuff. Well, congratulations on all the success. Uh, you're doing important work, and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Now, if somebody wants to learn more about Ten Point Capital, what's the website? At tenpointcapital.com. And that's the number. It's the number ten. Right. One zero point p o i n t capital c a p i t a l dot com. Yes. Well, thank you again for sharing your story. Thanks for having me. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Franchise Marketing Radio. 